Hello, welcome back to my second channel, Angel Vlogs 2, where we are talking about books all the time and it's so fun. I wanted to share five different books that I got sent from publishers. Are any of these ARCs? Actually, I don't think any of these are ARCs. I don't remember exactly what the publishing dates for each of these are, but I'm going to put them on the screen as we go through them. But really, I just wanted to share some very exciting books that are being published in 2024. Getting sent books is absolutely a dream come true. I don't know what I did to deserve this, but here we are, and I'm so, so excited to read all of these. Okay, let's just jump right in. I have five books here that I got sent recently that I'm really excited to read. They span across several different genres, so I'm really excited to share them with you so that you can hopefully find a new read to add to your TBR. The first book is The Framed Women of Ardemore House. This book was published by Hanover Square Press. Look how gorgeous this cover is. I mean, doesn't that just seem like a book you want to read. This book is by Brandy Schillis and it is a delicious little murder mystery. Not only is it a murder mystery, but the main character is a neurodivergent, hyperlexic book editor and divorced New Yorker transplanted into the English countryside. I mean, that's, that's all I needed to know. Murder mystery. We love a neurodivergent main character. We love a New Yorker and anything based in Europe. I'm like, sign me up. So Joe Jones, our lovely main character, has lost her job, her mother, and her marriage all in one year. And she couldn't be happier to take position of a potentially haunted, but clearly unwanted family estate in North Yorkshire. But when the body of a moody town groundskeeper turns up on her rug with bullet holes in his back, she finds herself in potential danger and she's a potential suspect, unfortunately. At the same time, a peculiar family portrait vanishes from a secret room in the manor bearing a strange connection to both the dead body and Joe's mysterious family history. With the aid of a Welsh antiques dealer, the morose local detective and an Irish innkeeper's wife, Joe embarks on a mission to clear herself of all blame, find the missing painting, and unearth a slew of secrets about the town, herself, and her family along the way. It's kind of giving the maid, isn't it? Because I feel like our main character in the maid also, I mean, it doesn't specifically say that she's a neurodivergent person, but I feel like she also just doesn't have the best social skills and that's something that she really struggles with and that sort of also just adds to one how lovable her character is but two the challenges that she has trying to clear her name. I feel like this book is going to be a little bit spooky, it's going to be suspenseful and I love 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 the fact that it's set in a slightly possibly haunted house. There's something about an old creepy house when it's not in a complete like terrorizing horror movie or horror book that almost feels like a cozy setting for a book to be in. I don't know, is it just me? This one, I actually reached out to the publishers to ask for the book because that's how excited about it I was. This is Butter by Asako Yuzuki. It is a novel of food and murder. The premise of this book sounds incredible. It's actually based on a true story, which is a little bit frightening, but it essentially follows a gourmet cook, Monaco Kaji, who, who has been convicted of the serial murders of lonely businessmen. So she seduces them, brings them to her home in promise of a delicious meal, and then murders them. This case has been absolutely popularized over media, but Kaji refuses to speak to people about it and give the real story. That is until a specific journalist, Rika Makita, writes a letter asking for her recipe for beef stew. And with that, Kaji could not help herself but to respond. As the visits happen, they seem more like a masterclass in cooking than an actual like serious reporting gig. But as time goes on, it seems like Rika, the reporter, is the one who is opening up and maybe changing more so than Kaji is. 
The summary in the back ends with, with each meal she eats, something is awakening in her body. Does she and Kaji have more in common than she once thought? So the real case that this book was inspired by was called The Konkatsu Killer, which is a convicted con woman and serial killer. But the author furthers the story and really makes it a book about the exploration of misogyny, obsession, romance, and the transgressive pleasures of food in Japan. I, I cannot wait to read this one. I just kind of already have a feeling that I am going to love this one. Also the cover. Come on. As a designer, I approve. I approve of this cover. It's kind of giving American Horror Story. The colors are so beautifully contrasted, like the red on the yellow. Everything about this cover is perfect to me. Storygraph describes this book as being perfect for readers who enjoy contemporary stories that challenges like the complexities of feminism set against the backdrop of Japan's food culture. So that is Butter by Asako Yuzuki published by Echo, an imprint of Harper's Collins. And yeah, I just, I this is like literally probably the book I'm most longingly wanting to read right now. Next on the list is Thirst by Marina Yuschuk. I might be mispronouncing her last name, so if you know the proper pronunciation for that, let me know. But this, my dear, is a book about vampires. Not just vampires, but it's a sapphic vampire story. I'm already obsessed with it. I'm already obsessed with it. So this book actually spans two different time periods, two women, one vampire, one mortal, and a yearning that will not let them rest. So it starts out in the twilight of Europe's bloody bacchanals of murder and feasting without end. In the 19th century, a vampire arrives in Europe to the coast of Buenos Aires and watches as a village transforms into a cosmopolitan city. She must adapt, intermingle with humans, and try to be as discreet as possible. Fast forward to modern day Buenos Aires, where a woman finds herself at a cemetery one day and meets this vampire. She is grappling with some major life events like her mom's terminal illness, her own relationship with motherhood. But when she meets this vampire, something ignites in the both of them and her life changes instantly. This book is a really fun play on the gothic genre while exploring female agency, desire, and the fragile lives and mortality of even creatures who are supposed to be immortal. Again, with the cover, I feel like these cover artists are really, really nailing it. Like, this is a gorgeous cover. The colors, I feel like, suit the premise of the story really well. You're getting the female body, but in this, like, marble statue or like a piece of a marble statue. After that, we have Anyone's Ghost by August Thompson. You know what? I feel like all of these covers are really singing to me today. That's the cover. She is gorgeous. She is spunky. This book has the themes of love and friendship. And the first line of the back of the book is it's so engaging and it's just so like it instantly makes you want to read it. But it says it took three car crashes to kill Jake. Theron David Alden is there for the first two. The summer they meet in rural New Hampshire when he's 15 and anxious and Jake's 17 and a natural. Then six years later in New York City, those two short, ecstatic, painful nights that change both of their lives forever. The end of the dream and the longing for the dream and the dream itself all at once. Theron is not there for the third crash, and yet their story contains so much joy and self-discovery, the glorious, stupid simplicity of a boyhood joke, the devastation of insecurity, the way a great song can distill a universe, the limits of what we can know about each other, the mysterious, porous, ungraspable fault line between yourself and the person you love better than yourself, the beautiful, toxic elixir of need and hope and want. Why did that summary, like, touch me? Why did that kind of break my heart? So as we can gather from the book summary, this is going to be another queer love story, but not just a love story, but a story about like 
deep, deep friendship. The story graph description says, anyone's ghost is about so very many things, the pains of growing up, friendship and pining, drugs, sex, and the frustrations of masculinity, and the thrill of testing death itself. But more than any of that, it is an overwhelmingly beautiful love story. I mean, tell me that doesn't sound absolutely perfect. Oh, that's funny. There's like a little feature review on the back and it just says, this book will make you cry. We all know how much I love books that make me cry. So why do I have a feeling all these books are going to sit so high, so high in my overall like yearly ratings? The last book on my list is The Manicurist's Daughter. This is a memoir by Susan Liu. I actually got sent like a cute little package that came with this. So there was the book obviously, but there were also artisanal handcrafted chocolates and confections inspired by the diverse flavors of Vietnam. The chocolatier is called Socola Chocolatier and they've been around for over 20 years, creating the highest quality chocolates and confections using the freshest ingredients. This is what the chocolates look like. The box is absolutely gorgeous but the flavors that are in here are oval rose jasmine tea and guava i think it's so pretty okay let's eat them they imprinted like the logo or the crest from the book on it which is amazing wow wow mm. the package also included some of the cutest postcards ever there is one where it shows you vietnamese crepes there's one that is saute clams with black bean sauce and green onions, which actually is a dish that we eat in China as well. And then there is sour tamarind soup with catfish. Okay, so anyways, back to the book. So you follow in the story of Suzanne Liu as she really just asks questions and is curious about her like family's past and her background. They were refugees of the Vietnamese war and Suzanne's family escaped to California in the 1980s after five failed attempts. Upon arrival, Suzanne's mother was their savvy, charismatic North Star, setting up two thriving nail salons and orchestrating every success until Suzanne was 11. That year, her mother died from a botched tummy tuck. Oh my gosh. After the funeral, no one was ever allowed to talk about her or what happened. For the next 20 years, Suzanne navigated a series of cascading questions alone. Why did the most perfect person in her life want to change her body? Why would no one tell her about her mother's life in Vietnam? And how did the surgeon who preyed on the Vietnamese immigrants go on operating after her mother's death? Sifting through depositions, tracking down the surgeon's family, and enlisting the helps of spirit channelers, Susan uncovers the painful truth of her mother, herself, and the impossible ideal of beauty. The Manicurist Daughter is much more than a memoir about grief, trauma, and body image. It is a story of fierce determination, strength in shared culture, and finding your place in the world. I, I'm i gonna love this book. I'm gonna love this book and everything about it. The fact that it's about, one, an immigrant's experience being an Asian American, two, family trauma. I mean, we all know I love family trauma, but also the exploration of like self-image in body image and how society as well as history, as well as just like your belief in yourself all plays into that. By far, I would say that that is one of the most interesting memoir summaries I have ever read and probably the one that has spoken to me the most. Also, I think I forgot to mention, but Sokola Chocolatier is actually by Susan Liu. Like this is her business, this chocolatier. I'm so excited to learn more about her life and everything that happened with her mom, but also maybe like more about her business and how she got into starting Sokola Chocolatier. Obviously while eating the chocolates. So those are five 2024 releases that I am like so incredibly excited about. You have no idea. Tell me these books did not all sound absolutely amazing. I hope that there was something in here that you haven't heard about yet and that you want to add to your TBR list because that's the whole purpose I make these videos is so that I can introduce more delicious, yummy reads to you. The colors of all these books also just makes me so happy. Like, oh, I love, love, love when a book cover speaks to me. But that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
Let me know in the comments which one you're most excited to read or which one spoke to you the most. I'll put a list of all of these as well as links to these books in the description so it's easy for you to find. I do have a lovely little community on Discord as well as write a newsletter. So if you want to connect with me further, please go and check those out. And this is my second channel. So I do have a main channel where I talk more about self-growth, wellness, productivity, life, all of those topics. So that will be linked in the description box below as well. I hope you are having an amazing day wherever you are in the world. Happy reading and I will see you in my next video.